You're listening to episode 89 of the D6 Podcast. Here's the encouragement I give you. The shortest distance between your child's heart, your grown child's heart, and Christ is you. Parents need to own that they are the primary disciples of their child. Our goal in parenting is not for our kids ultimately to get a great education, as good as that is. Our goal is not for them to be great athletes. Our goal is not for them to go on great dates and have find a great husband or a great wife. Our goal is not for them to have a great career with a great job, making great money. Our goal is for them to love a great God. A great God, a great God. A great You're great listening God. to the D6 Podcast. Here's your hosts, Ron Hunter and Jeremy Lee. This is the Family Ministry Podcast that helps you connect the church and home. Ron, how are we doing today? I am much better than last week. I feel like I've gotten that extra week, even though I was working, uh, but doing really well, loving the new year. Feeling good. I'm feeling good, yes. We got a better attitude about 2018. I love it. I do, I do. In fact, it's starting out busy. We're uh, at different conferences speaking. Always love that opportunity and representing D6 uh, both here and in Canada this month. So, yeah, just doing doing quite a bit. Oh, Canada. So, oh, yes. Yeah, hey, go to the washroom. (laughs) <laughs> That's right. My wife makes fun of me because I do call it the washroom. It just makes more sense than calling it the restroom. I've never rested in a restroom. Mm. So, <laughs> like our listeners wanted to hear that. Hey, I've got a surprise for you. Yeah, I what's talk that? To you about this. Uh-oh. So, you know how I hate surprises. I got an email from one of our listeners. Listen to what he says. Yeah? He says, I have many ideas for uh, the parenting class I want to start, and your podcast have been instrumental in all of this. And Listen to what he says. Truly, I would not have the guts nor to desire to do this without your words. Mm, wow. I know. Let that soak in as we start the another guts, podcast. The guts, yeah. Isn't that awesome? Let's, let's, help, let's help give some more people some guts to do some things. I love that. That I is awesome. Yeah. guts to that do is, this. Step up, people. So listen. Follow this guy's lead. Get some guts and uh, go after the families in your ministry. Think about reorganizing where you're not just focusing on the actual children or students, but you're taking a view of the whole family. So hashtag get some guts. Get some guts. Hashtag Love D6 it. podcast. Love it. <laughs> Let's do this. All right. Hey, listen, our uh, guest today is Tim Goodyear. We're also going to hear from President Matthew Pinson. Correct. I, you know, I've always thought that would be a cool title to have in front of my name, but then when as I've gotten older, I know what it takes to be called president. I'm not mm, interested. So exactly, I've got, exactly. Maybe we're going to be talking a little bit about that. Matthew Pinson is. Uh, we're going to be talking about balance in the midst of a lot of craziness and chaos he's been through in the past year. Before we go too far, though, in a new year, most churches get new budgets. Yes, and uh, you guys have set up a uh, a, a way for people to get in on the D6 conference early and leverage some of that budget that they might have. I know, listen, when I was a minister, seriously, I was not your best example. Uh, when I'm, I'm, I'm talking about when I was an on-staff church minister, when they would give me my budget money, it was like shopping spree time, man. I, was, <laughs> I had that stuff burnt up and I, you would never do this. No, You're not the kind no. of guy that would ever do this. That's me though. And, uh, and so before you burn up all that money, if you're like me, uh, jump in and make sure you got your training uh, taken care of. And if you're interested in family ministry, none better than the D6 conference. Just want to tell you about that. That's right. You know, I would suggest they go out and look at the D6 conference. And when your organization is healthy, it comes from you taking your budget and not only investing in yourself, but the leaders around you. Make sure they are learning at a pace with you. And look at the conference and go, hey, if I brought these four people or these six people, imagine what they could look like on the other side of this. So if you're a leader who loves learning from incredibly high-capacity leaders, you like sitting in a room and brainstorming and talking to other people, tackling the same issues about student ministry, lead pastor, family ministry, worship, any one of these areas, children's, women's, men's, parents, grandparents, you name the topic. You want to rub shoulders with other high-capacity leaders and walk away feeling energized, invigorated, inspired. You need to get your team there, not just yourself. And I would suggest that you take that budget and invest it accordingly and pray about who should be invested in. And not everybody can do this, but there's a multiplying effect 
when you can bring even one or two of the greatest influencers yeah. from your volunteer team as a gift to something like D6 Conference. And if your budget won't support it, and, uh, and I get it because most, most of the places I was in, I never could take everybody I wanted to take. But I would go to them and say, hey, we're planning on taking a group. Would you invest in your family, in our church, and see if they won't invest the money themselves so that they can have a trip with you? And believe it or not, I know you're humble, but if you invite some people along to go with you to a conference, they'll be blown away that you simply invited them just to attend with you as a ministry leader within the church. And if you've never done this before, I just ask you to consider how much easier it would be to not attend something like D6 and then try to bring that energy back to your volunteer team mm-hmm. who they were running pickup lines and dropping kids off at the soccer games. They were not at where you were. It's really hard to bring that energy back. And if you can bring especially those influencers to something like that and they can experience it with you, it's so much easier. Again, not everybody can. That but is it, so but, true. But hey, get some guts. Get after it. Go and try something new this year. And uh, we cheer that on here. Listen to Jeremy. He is so right. You've got to share that love and let them share the influence when they're done. That's right. So tell us about Tim Goodyear. Tim Goodyear is in charge of Home Point, which is a really cool organization. They, uh, they're they about as turnkey as you can get in the family ministry resource world. They offer great stuff that you just hand to parents, but their whole goal is to help families be intentional. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about in our interview today with Tim. And then we have President Matthew Pinson. Which, thinking of intentionality, I, I would not have used that word, but it's perfect, Jeremy, because I'm asking him that in the midst of every plate that he is keeping spinning up in the air, and let's face it, ministry alone is so demanding, it is not nine to five. We know that. How then do we balance our family life, our personal life with our kids and our, our marriage? And that's what he's going to give us incredible insight on with a person who I think manages more than the average person. Okay, so we've got a lot, but it's going to be worth it. Let's jump in. After the break, we're going to be hearing from Tim Goodyear. Scripture and modern day research attests to this truth. When one generation commits to and engages in the discipleship of another generation, people of all ages know Jesus and become more like him. This commitment requires us to say goodbye to the myopic focus on the next generation and instead broaden our view to every generation. Every generation. Moms, dads, grandmas and grandpas, aunts and uncles, kindergartners and middle school students, college freshmen and newlyweds, each one awakened to Jesus Christ and living out a vibrant faith with one another. We invite you to adopt this focus at the D6 Conference, a family ministry event built on the Deuteronomy 6 philosophy of generational discipleship. You will experience three days of strategy, resources, and action steps to help move your church forward together. Discover what's in store at d6conference.com. I want to welcome our guest, Mr. Tim Goodyear. Thank you for being here, sir. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, Tim loves to help leaders implement strategies to drive faith home. He's helped over 500 churches. That's a, that's a lot of churches. You, you're tired. <laughs> yeah, we know all across the country and even a few around the world. So it's been a lot of fun. Oh, wow. Fun. So after 18 years in the corporate world, Tim earned a THM. What's that? Uh, Masters of Theology. The, oh, my bad. Yeah, I should know that. From Dallas Seminary and served in pastoral roles at Lake Point Church, the home of the, I was tell, talking about Lydia about this, the home of the slide instead of the that's, stairs. That's the children's exactly right. That's the only thing I remember. I was that's there exactly once. Right. I remember that. Uh, where Home Point was pioneered, and Mountain Park Community Church in Phoenix. Uh, Tim and Laura have two teenage sons. I love that. All right, so you are here at D6. You're teaching on 10 keys to creating a culture of intentional families. I love that word. Um, I think it's very, very descriptive of how to be healthy as a parent. So I wish I could have time with you today to do all 10, but let's try our best to get in the best five. How yeah, about that? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, and let me just say, you know, these came out of, um, we gathered a group of churches several years ago, uh, all innovating ideas, and, and these were the best of the best that came out of that. It's so our whole strategy is based on these, these 10. And, you know, the first one is really have an empowered uh, visionary champion. And what we mean by that is, is you have to have somebody on your team that lives, sleeps, eats, breathes, thinks family discipleship, you know, intentionality at home. 
And not that everybody else shouldn't, but you've got to have that one key person that keeps it in front of everybody else. And, and that's really the idea of the empowerment is, is they have full empower to remind the senior pastor, you know, remind the, the children's student, you know, whoever that person is, they get to remind everybody on the team um, that we've got to keep this in front of us. And if you mm -hmm. don't, you're going to lose it, right? Vision, vision leaks. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, if everybody owns it, nobody owns it. So you've mm -hmm. got to have that one key person. Okay, perfect. What's that next one? Yeah, so the next one is what we call two-degree um, strategies. And what we mean by this, in the church world, we tend to way overestimate what we can do in the short term and we tend to way underestimate what we can do in the long term. We, we jump onto that next big fad and we think it's gonna make all the difference in the world. And what we really need to be doing is looking at, hey, what, what's the small incremental changes that we can make yeah, that are gonna be good. sustainable over the long haul? And that's where we're gonna make the difference. Perfect. You're, you're nailing these, this is great. <laughs> number three. Yeah, so, so number three is use existing time slots. And, and what we mean here is people will give you one, maybe two hours a week. They'll come to worship, they'll, they'll do a small group or maybe serve in children's or students. But what a lot of churches try and do is squeeze in extras yeah, when it they comes to, to family <laughs> discipleship. Do. So, so they try and do you know, a, a, a Friday night, Saturday morning workshop, and that's great, but your attendance is going to drop dramatically. Yeah. And so what we encourage churches to do is, is leverage your Sunday morning. If, if you've already got your, your biggest, most influential voice speaking to the biggest crowd, why isn't that where you're talking about family discipleship? Yeah. You've already got kids and, and students in, in fantastic you know, children's and student ministry. Why aren't we leveraging those to bring home family discipleship? And so, so it's just ex, you know, leverage what you're already using as a church instead of trying to add more on. Love it. Okay, number four. Yep, number four, customization is key. And, and this one simply means every home is different. It's not a one size fits all. And so we've got, you know, single parents, blended families. We've got grandparents raising the grandchildren. And so, so as we're approaching this whole idea of, of intentionality at home and family discipleship, are we looking through a lens that says, um, do we have something for everybody? Mm -hmm. are, is there something that we're providing, resources, tools that we're giving that fit every home? Because one size just doesn't fit all. Now, we're down to number one. <laughs> it's time. Yep. What do we got? Yeah, yep. so here, here's the biggie. Um, and this one really lands with a lot of churches. And it's, are we investing um, both financially and with our time in tools for families. Mm. And, and the easiest way to look at this is, is I love the D6, you know, one, 168th, right? You know, the one hour a week's not enough. I love that idea. Take that same idea and take a look at your budget. And, huh. and, and, and point, point to the line item that you spend on tools for families when they're at home and then look at all the line items you have for it's while, probably not enough. While, yeah, while they're on your church campus, right? Yeah. And, and what we do is we, we've got it upside down. We, we spend 99.9% .9 of our money for that one hour, and we spend hardly any for the other 167. Nice. And, and, and so what are we doing as a church to actually invest in giving families the tools that they need to actually letting our staff have the time that they need to, to prepare and equip these folks? Um, and, and so it's, are we investing in what we're, you know, put our money where our mouth is, I guess is the way to say it. I love it. So tell us... Since we're talking about investing in those resources, yeah. you guys have provided a, some really cool resources. Give us a picture of it. Sure, sure. So what we did, we took all 10 of the keys and we created a strategy. And our strategy is really two simple things. It's how do we make it really easy that families will do the right thing? And how do we make it more likely that they'll actually do it? And, and the key for, for our thinking and our strategy is what, what HomePoint is all about is what's not happening in our homes. And so we want to help church leaders actually put their money where their mouth is, actually equip families to be intentional at home with all kinds of tools and resources. And so, so for us, it's, it's have a physical resource center on your campus, make it really, really easy for people to connect with the resources. And we, we help you create a lot of those tools to have in there. The, the one size doesn't fit all. We help you create the, the things that everybody can use, um, that, that the, different, you know, the different families can use. And so make it really easy for them. And then to make it more likely for us is, is go ahead and leverage those, those time slots you already have through what we call integrated campaigns. And it's, it's a couple times a year, focus on some kind of call to action. It might be challenging families to pray together and then giving them tools to help. Challenging families to put down their electronics and actually engage with one another in real face-to-face -face communication. And we'll give you the tools to help. So it's that, that kind of thinking. And then the last piece for us is what we call Faith Path. And Faith Path is simply 12 steps from birth to age 18 and we've got a kit, a resource kit for every step of the way that we give the parents. And it might be things like spending time in God's word or praying together or serving together. And so we want to equip those parents to actually um, really be the primary disciplers of their kids. And we're going to give you the tools. We're going to give you the training on how to do it so you can go home and do it. Perfect. You have just 
done such a good job with your word economy. I mean, <laughs> seriously, you said so much in such little time, and it's very appreciated. Th- that's the engineer in me. I'm telling you, man. Thank you so much for taking some time with us. Sure. If you guys want to learn more about the resources of uh, Drive Faith Home, you can go to Drive Faith Home. Dot com. Uh, Tim Goodyear has been with us. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Have you ever left a conference so excited to download what you've learned, but when you start to talk, no one gets it? When you pull out your notes, no one responds the way you envisioned. D6 Days is a free two-day online event designed to help you share the same vision, passion, and learning experienced at the D6 conference. Because when we share things effectively, momentum builds exponentially. And D6 Days is a convenient opportunity for you to share with everyone, your staff, volunteers, and church family. During the event, you'll hear from around 30 voices in family ministry and generational discipleship. The team at D6 provides this free because we want every person who's committed to generational discipleship to be equipped regardless of their budget. And we've crafted an online environment where we can interact and engage with you. Whether you are in the comfort of your home, at the office, or watching D6 Days Over Coffee, join us February 12th and 13th for D6 Days 2018. To sign up, go to d6days.com. Thanks God to Mr. Tim Goodyear. I love what he had to say about just the idea of being intentional. Um, that's really for most parents, in my opinion, that I work with and deal with, and even in myself, just actually stopping the everyday routine for a second and planning mm-hmm. and thinking about yeah. the faith development of our kids and what we can do for that. It's the hardest thing ever. So helping families be intentional Big deal. That's right. And President Pence is going to continue this theme because I'm going to tell you, time with your kids, time with your marriage will not just happen. It doesn't just magically appear. My time is gone before I know it. I'm sitting there working on my laptop at home working on my you know, tablet or whatever, and all of a sudden I realize I'm, I'm just oblivious to all that's going on around me. Mm. Listen to his insight over how he literally plans for those times with his kids. Not just, he doesn't just plan time, he plans development time. And mm. that's what I love about this interview. To think strategically when it comes to your kids and your wife or your husband and your family, wow. Let's listen to President Matthew Pinson. We're sitting here with Dr. J. Matthew Pinson, who is the president of Welch College, has been in that role for over 15 years. His wife, Melinda, and he have two teenage kids living out their faith and their values. Uh, Dr. Pinson is quite an accomplished uh, scholar. He's written numerous books. You can find him all over Amazon. And he is quite a scholar in the areas of theology and church history. I want to welcome Dr. Pinson to our D6 podcast. Thank you so much, Ron. Dr. Pinson, you have, uh, I've watched you from uh, close and afar, and you have a, you know, quite a number of accomplishments. You and I talked off the air, and I want to zero in on one of them. Uh, and everybody wants to always talk career, talk this, talk the other. But the D6 podcast always zeroes in on family. Not only are you the president of a, of a, of a notable college, but... In the midst of being a president, you've continued your writing, you like to teach, you mentor students, but you've done something that not a lot of presidents can say. You relocated an entire campus. You sold one property, you housed there, you built a new, and by the way, if if you're listening, you need to go to welch.edu and take a look at the beautiful uh, campus that they have built. But Dr. Pinson, here's my question. In the midst of doing all of that, you have maintained being an incredible husband and a father. I want to know how you're managing the discipline of the hours in a day as it relates to your home life. Well, um, that's, a, that's a complicated question. Uh, and it's all about disciplining uh, yourself in terms of your time and your schedule. Uh, one time Daryl Ellis asked me how I did everything that I do and managed to, uh, to to spend a lot of time with my wife and, and, and my children. And I told him that uh, a lot of it had to do with not watching that much television. Yes. <laughs> I think that there are a lot of time wasters that uh, take us away from, from family commitments. And so 
uh, in this particular project, that has had to be uh, even more stringent. Uh, I've just disciplined myself to, uh, you know, not to do a lot of things that I enjoy, uh, not to do a lot of things that uh, a lot of hobbies, a lot of things that I'm accustomed to doing so that, uh, you know, in a project like this, the only thing that I have time to do is spend with my wife, Melinda, and, and my children, Anna and Matthew, <laughs> outside of the project, outside of, of my duties at Welch. Yeah, you know our listeners, uh, we always highly recommend that they have some type of personal investment that they have in their own lives. But I, I share some of the same sentiment with you, Dr. Pinson, in that uh, when my kids came along, I gave up golf, and I was a pretty avid golfer prior to that because it takes up way too much time in a week. And now, you know, when we look at it, having gone through grad school, you know, I gave up TV all but one or two hours a week, and I'm probably not back up much more, you know, than four or five a week on elected TV. So I I think what I'm hearing you say is that our listeners need to examine their hobbies, examine the amount of time they're spending away from family, still invest in that, whether it's reading or personal development. So talk to me about when you come home at night, how do you shift from the heaviness of the day to plugging into family? Tell me about that transition. Well, we have, uh, you know, it's it's difficult, especially in a project like we've been through the last uh, two years, but we have uh, attempted to place a lot of importance on not staying over, and of course, Melinda's been heavily involved in this as well, on the design side. And it's been a challenge for both of us, but we've committed ourselves to not staying over, having strict times uh, when we leave the office and come home. We try to place an emphasis on uh, family meals together and on family devotions, family worship times, uh, uh, spending, uh, you know, making time in the evening as a hallowed time. Um, Of course, you know, as you know, when you when you get teenagers, uh, there are a lot of baseball games, a lot of concerts, a lot of plays and rehearsals and things like that, uh, baseball practice. And so we've, you know, you have to carve out time for that. And I think that's part of it is, is saying, you know, my family is my priority here and, uh, this is priority for me and I'm, this is going to be inviolable. And so, uh, uh I'm going to make that game. Uh, I'm going to make that, that concert. I'm going to take the kids to, uh, to practice. And we're going to have family meals. We're going to have family devotions. And uh, it's going to be inviolable. And I think you just have to commit to that and, again, avoid the time wasters. Absolutely. So here, here's the big question. Your son or daughter is doing homework. One of them's doing math and one of them's writing a paper. Do they go to you or Melinda? Oh, well, they always go to Melinda with the math and always come to me with the paper. <laughs> Good deal. I, I was I was thinking that might be the answer to that one. Yes. Can you imagine? Can, hey, Dad, can you have time? That that's awesome. So so let me let me ask you this: When you talked about doing family uh, time, family worship, what does that look like for your for the Pinson family? Well, you know, sometimes uh, we have sung, uh, but uh, most of the time it's uh, m- my leading of the family in scripture. And, uh, and sometimes we'll read historical, uh, you know, uh, devotional writings, and then uh, I get them involved in discussion, and then one of us prays. It's not a, a long, usually not a long thing. It's not necessarily every night, but uh, it's frequent, and it's regular, and uh, it's, it's a hallowed time of, of worship for us. And I think that's, uh, I think that's so important, you know, and uh, also just finding teachable moments to, you know, Paul Tripp says that the, uh, that the family is God's primary learning community. And I think that, yeah. that uh, just finding teachable moments to, uh, to communicate to our kids uh, what's important and why we believe what we believe and how we respond to the culture we're in. So Very cool. Well, last question here, and, and this is what it's all about. When we have what you said that David Paul Tripp notes – is those teachable moments, those influential times. What do you see right now in your son and in your daughter that you're most proud of that you know they have caught from you and Melinda? (laughs) Yeah, you know, um, I think that uh, they both have, um, you know, they they are my kids, and uh, but but I think that they both have an amazing amount of discernment uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to how they use their time and to 
the uh, the secular culture and and their involvement with that. Um, I'm I'm excited about the uh, the kind of discernment that they have, and you know they're both uh, they they love people and 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 they love people that uh, 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 you know are different from them, and 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 they they treat people uh, uh, with the fruit of the spirit, and so that I'm very impressed by the fact that Anna and Matthew. Uh, uh, love people and, and love all kinds of people and love the popular kids and the unpopular kids. And, and I love that. Dr. Pinson, I've seen your kids up close and they are a testimony of what you and Melinda have invested in them. Thank you for coming on Thank the you. D6 podcast and sharing with us and all of the listeners on what it means to be able to balance that personal home life in the midst of what I would consider one of the highest capacity leaders, you know, handling the types of tasks that I know. So thank you for doing that today. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Ron. It was a pleasure. What'd you think, Jeremy? Was I, that not, I mean, I I'm, I'm feel guilty just hearing him talk. I'm telling you. And he he went through all that stuff, and I just, I can't get through Tuesday being intentional. Yeah. And he's been through all that junk. Uh, wow. Thank you so much. He's done it well. I mean, his kids, his, his, his home, yeah, really, really incredible. So appreciate it, Dr. Pinson, for sharing that with us. You know, I opened up the show with an email, and I just can't tell you what it's like when a listener emails us, what it does for us as far mm-hmm. as encouragement. It's not about us, but it just helps us so much to begin talking to you guys and hearing what you want for this podcast. It's not just what we want. I know we talk a lot about D6 and the things that are going on. That's part of the purpose here, to let you guys in on that. Make sure you're connected to what's happening with our organization here. Uh, and also, we want to make give you access to the greatest family ministry leaders in the whole world. We, we do that as well. But we want this to be something that you speak into and are a part of. So, Ron, tell them uh, if they want to email you and talk to you personally, how can they do that? Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to connect with you on email or Twitter or whatever. So uh, my email address is my first and last name with a period in between, ron.hunter at randallhouse.com, R-A-N-D-A-L-L-H-O-U-S-E.com. And, and I have Twitter, email. Oh, yeah, at Ron Hunter. That's right. Twitter's good as well. I've emailed and tweeted him and he does respond. I promise you. I don't uh, respond nicely to Jeremy, but I do to all of you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for listening. Hey, next week we're going to have some great guests. Oh, I love this. I just looked down and saw who the guests would be. It makes me just smile thinking about oh, yeah. this. Vern Bingston. I'll never forget. Uh, did I say that? Bingston? Yes. Binkston? Yes. It's an interesting last name. We're guess. not going to give his bio now. We want them to tune in next yes. week because okay. his content is incredible. Yes. Guys, seriously. Guys, 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 listen. Yeah. Take Just listen to me and trust me. Tune in next week. You're going to love Vern. And then we also have Larry Fowler. Yes, Larry Fowler is literally leading a whole new movement for grandparents. And you need to retool how your seniors think about their opportunities. And Larry Fowler will give us that insight. He's changing the game. He is. Like prior, when I first met him, he was just like, Basically a legend. They gave him they've already given him like a lifetime achievement award for ministry. Mm-hmm. He ain't even dead yet. And they've yeah. given him a lifetime achievement award. So he could give up and go home. He'd be okay. And but he and doesn't. Yet in the midst of all that, when he could have just quit, he completely changed the game and shifted grandparenting and really created the created the whole language for grandparenting ministry. Great guy to listen to. Can't wait to hear that. Hey, don't forget d6conference.com. Make sure to check that out like we talked about earlier. They have some great speakers and stuff you're going to want to check out. They already have a good list compiled already, and you're going to enjoy that. We hope to hear from you next week. Please join us every Tuesday. Thanks for listening to the D6 Podcast. You've been listening to the D6 Podcast. You can learn more about D6 at d6family.com. And if you're a minister, we invite you to join the D6 Leader Network by going to d6leadernetwork.com.